Let's jump to the wall here, and today we've got a bit of a hybrid video in that we're rating this Doom stack, but also saving a disaster battle. So we've got a rating your disaster battle, where we've got a Bugman Ranger Doom stack, quote unquote, uh, but it does have some long beards in there, which I don't think they're the best for this. If you're going to have units for like tanking, you're better off with some Thanes. I just think they're they're better at it. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, got five master engineers in here. The, uh, like, that's good. It boosts their, their abilities by a ton. The only problem is that from the campaign perspective, it's turn 139 right now, which means I'd be very surprised if he had any more engineer capacity than this. And you're just depriving your other armies of having a master engineer, and you should try to have at least one master engineer in all of your armies. In the super late game, this would be fine to put like six, seven eight master engineers in a single army because you'll be able to have that many cities by then but he probably doesn't have that many right now but we'll see later on all right now we have to have a look at our enemy here he has said that he can't seem to win this battle and i can kind of see why even though it says it's evenly matched here i'm sure when we get into the battle uh it'll show the bounce of power being in their favor if we hit order resolve we will definitely lose now, I think the problem here is actually the enemy cavalry. Now, while when you play as Talson, your cavalry will act like a wet noodle against dwarves, we have to keep in mind that the combat modifiers means that their units are not the same as our units. So, you know, if you're if you, on your campaigns you're using wild riders charging into long beards and they're doing no damage, the when the rolls are reversed the reverse will happen just because of the combat modifiers so i could totally expect wild riders to absolutely wreck us here and i think that's what's been the problem just a lot of armor piercing high damage stuff in here and of course tons of experience anyway let's jump into the battle and see if we can win it and then we'll see if this army is any good or not because i think the main thing that i'm going to be evaluating this on is is it good enough to be worth ha putting in this many master engineers and no artillery in the army. Okay, so, given the situation that we're up against cavalry, the best thing you want to do against cavalry is corner camp. And the reason for that is because the AI doesn't know how to deal with that. Um, they, they love to flank, right? If we just stay out in the open, right here, they, they just have free open season to just charge into wherever they want. They're too fast, there's no way we can move three units around to properly protect ourselves. But, if you use the corners here, they will usually move into the corner within range of being shot and then kind of sit around trying to think about what to do. It's not about blocking them from charging, it's about confusing them enough to actually get some shots in. Now, on top of that, not only are we going to corner camp, which is really the, like, the Dwarf 101 strategy, um, but we're also going to check a board. We've got an uneven number of Bugman's Rangers, so I just got to get the formations looking nice and tidy. Alright, then. Now, the purpose of Checkerboard is that if the unit goes into melee, that it tanks as many units as possible so that the, the ranks behind them can keep shooting. That's the biggest benefit to it. Trying to make this look alright. Uh, I think that's about as good as we're going to get it to look. Then long beards over. All oh, right, they'll have to move after because they don't have um, vanguard deployed. Now we'll also need to use the engineers to tank them. We only really need one guy to stand in here to use this. And the thing is, at this point here, what's their reload time? Two seconds. All right. So, actu in actual fact, this is completely useless because if it's at two seconds, yeah, well, I'm just going to use them as tanks. There's no need to buff them. They've also got that other, like, black powder ability, but that doesn't affect, um, like, that does no damage bonus for Bugman's range. It's only for artillery. It, they'll, still, they'll still apply the buff, it just won't do anything. So they don't need to stand nearby it. 
And then Belagar. Okay. So yeah, I really don't think you need these long beards at all. Some more Bungman's Rangers would have been way better. But since we've got them, we might as well bloody use them. So, I think it would be better to put the engineers up first before the... Doesn't seem to have any special oath gold items on this, so it's definitely not like a perfected stack at all. This, is... this, this could be a lot better. And what we need to do is just make sure that nobody interrupts the Bugman Rangers. Okay, and while they're marching forward, have Belagar just moving back and forth. You don't necessarily need these guys here to be shooting. They don't do that much anyway. Okay, there's a bunch of stationary units. Cool, just let the Longbeards tank it and the Bugman Rangers turn around to get rid of the Great Stagnites. Don't let anyone pass through here. See, this is what I was talking about here, right? They just sit there. This is the perfect opportunity. You get a little bit of time to shoot them, which I didn't really make a whole lot of use of. But there's other stuff going on. And just try to use our engineers as tanks, which that's not what they're designed for, but they're providing their bonuses to these guys from the global point of view. Yeah, bounce power was not favorable at all. As long as they don't die, it should be fine. But you can see here, these guys do not last long. And some more firepower, just making sure all of these guys are shooting while no one's in melee. That's the most important thing here. it. Don't, don't let anybody get near here. That's it. Okay. This one's pretty badly damaged, but I already used that ability, so he can't move. Belagar's an excellent tank. You gotta get yourself some Oath Gold into these guys, so that you can get the Iron Warden tanked. That's it. That's it. Uh oh. Okay, good. That's it. <laughs> they had a perfect opportunity to charge into us here and they didn't take it. This is it. Because the last thing you want to do is get surrounded by a superior enemy, so. I mean, I know corner camping is cheese, but if you're doing doom stacks, like. It's like. I like to cheese, but not that cheese! <laughs> you know? Only some cheese are acceptable. As long as they don't get wiped out, they can tank it for a bit. Get back there. Even shooting into their shields, the Wood Elves, they do a ton of damage. Everybody... Hang on, why aren't you shooting? Bouncer power's improving, that's it. Okay, this guy here is taking too much damage. Let's move him back. Cyclins and others. I really, really think you need to take out the Longbeards. They are useless in this army. They are not providing a good benefit. It could, it does have the potential to be a good army, but it's you gotta take the Longbeards out of here. Either put in a Thane or just use um, more long uh, Bugman Rangers. I mean. Belagar's getting a bit, bit wrecked. This one at the back. We have to pull Belagar out. Okay, everybody needs to be shooting into this. Okay, get them over there. Okay, get Belagar out of there. This, get this guy out of here. Too much damage. Too much damage. Okay, everybody needs to save him. Oh, he's taking damage way too quickly there. I don't know if I can save him. Luckily, they give up trying to attack him. As soon as... 
as soon as he breaks. Also, getting rid of Orion could help. A fair bit. As long as he doesn't get wiped out. It's fine. So far, no units have been wiped out. Fuck, that's close. Okay, Orion's down. That's good, because he was casting some stupid metal magic spells. Yeah, yeah, you stay at the rear. You're done. Bouncer Power is still not favorable. But I think the worst of it's over at this point here. This, as long as all of our guys are shooting, I think we've got the advantage. Too bad we can't get them to bloody shoot at our single entities. They're just less accurate at it. Or at least we've got shields and they don't. Bit reluctant to send Belagar in here, but I'm really just trying to keep them from shooting us too much. Okay, the backline's not shooting so much now because they're outranging us. Bouncer powers in our favor. Cool, looks like we might just get through this. With no units being wiped out. No, get them back. Get them back. There we go. Okay. Well, that's just the literal definition of a Pyrrhic victory, isn't it? I mean, it's a tough enemy to go up against for sure, but this army could certainly use some improvements. Yeah. At least we won the battle. Alright. So, in evaluating it, um, it definitely has potential. Longbeard's got to go. They've just got to go. They were not very good. You could have replaced it with just about any other unit. All they were good for was tanking. They got like a handful of kills. And they didn't tank anywhere near as long as these guys. Like these guys didn't do a great job in the battlefield. But at least they're providing loads of loads of buffs for, for these guys here. Lots of extra ammunition. Like without them, these guys would have run out of ammo in the battle. And uh, you know they were providing a range buff. Extra reload time reduction. Just passively, they didn't even have to be close by them, which is why I didn't bother using that ability. They've also got the extra physical resistance if you pop that, um, you know, that one that pins our own guys down. Whereas the um, the longbeards don't provide any sort of value like that. Now, I'm not saying that you should put more of um, the uh, engineers in there. I think that's enough. Five is enough. Maybe one more just for the extra ammunition and missile damage. But you're definitely not going to get more use out of our reload time reduction. But yeah, as for the long beards, more firepower here would have been really good, just so we could have inflicted more damage. And that's the real crux of why melee infantry aren't that good and why you don't even need them at all, is because they don't dish out anywhere near as much damage as, as in DPS, as archers, and they, they still get killed just as easily. Now, rating the army as things are, I'd probably give this about a 6 out of 10. It wasn't great, but it does have the potential to get to being a 9 out of 10, I would say. But you've got to level it up correctly. You've got to make sure that... You get rid of the long beards, obviously. Put in some more Bugman Rangers. The Bugman Rangers did great. They all got, like, hundreds of kills. Um, you also need... Um, to make sure that you've got equipment on all of your heroes, make sure they've got the Iron Warden tankers so they can just keep replenishing their uh, their health. See the guy that that we um, moved to the back at you know midway through the battle. If he had the Iron Warden tankered, he could have been replenishing health, and then I could have brought him back up to the front. But I was so scared of like getting him actually killed that he had to just sit there. Now it's just a matter of getting enough Oath Gold, which you shouldn't have too much trouble given how much territory you've got, which. I'm sure that's not all of it. It's like Corone, same color. Um, shouldn't be too difficult for you to get the Iron Warden tank and then just get some stuff for like physical resistance. And I wouldn't say that you need to have Runesmiths in here for their for their buffs, because if you keep putting too much variety in the army, you end up with just a really wonky sort of situation. Um, and you can, like, they don't need to tank for very long. That that, like, that battle was very quick. Didn't last very long. True king of eight feet. But yeah, if we have a look... Oh my god, you got heaps. 
Uh, is it a talisman or enchanted item? I can't remember. Yeah, there's nothing stopping you from getting it. Yeah, you, you could have got. There's no equipment on them at all. None. I mean, given given the situation that they had no equipment on them at all, I guess that went better than to be expected. But I'm still like rating it exactly how you've sent it in. It's a six out of ten. But you've definitely got potential for a nine out of ten. I, I can't really see this being a ten out of ten. Um, but yeah, you've got to put in the appropriate items. You know, you've got the earth gold. I'm all for saving Earth Gold, right? But you've you put these guys at risk. Some of these ones here aren't uh, level 40 either. Let me just check. What's your capacity for heroes? You got six. So one of them is elsewhere. Okay, that's, whatever. It's fine. Um, yeah, give it. If you put on the equipment for them, immediately you bump it up to like a 7.5. Take these guys out of the army. Put in more Bugman Rangers. 9 out of 10. Just like that. That's all you're going to do to fix this. So it's got good potential. Even like That was one of more, the more difficult enemies to go up against. Just because they outrange you. Most other enemies you go up against. Like Greenskins for example. The only thing that would outrange you are the Doomdiver Catapults. Which there's not... They don't usually recruit that many of them, but at the same time, there's not much you can do about them anyway, unless you bring artillery. Um, I guess another problem with this is it's not very good at uh, sieging, but it doesn't really need to be because they can stalk. So you could sneak them over walls. You just don't have a siege attacker in your army. So that's a bit of a problem as well. So maybe even, maybe even it would be an 8 out of 10 just because most doom stacks in this game are also good at sieging. So... There's, there's potential, but it's it just wasn't quite there yet. But anyway, we got through the battle. I'll send the safe file back so they can continue his campaign. Maybe tweak it a bit more and send it down, send it back uh, later down the track. But anyway, uh, that's it in this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned something about how to use an archer-based army using heroes and certain amount of buffs and how melee infantry, you're actually better off not having any of them. Trust me, when I first play, started playing this game, I used to use like six archers and rest melee infantry just to protect the archers. And as I continued to play the game, I just started phasing out more and more of the melee infantry until I actually found out I didn't need any of them and that the melee infantry were actually weakening my armies. So it's not like when I first started playing the game, I was just like, right, straight to archer spam. Wasn't like that at all. If you really want to see me play this game like shit, go and watch the first campaign I ever did playing as the High Elves. I can't remember what it's called. It's just like High Elf Let's Play 1 on the Vortex. That was the worst campaign I've ever done. Like, I'm so bad at the game there. I was <laughs> recruiting relatively balanced armies. There's like loads of Phoenix Guard. There's no Sisters of Avalon because the DLC hadn't come out yet. I didn't get any entrepreneurs, and I struggled through the entire campaign. So if you want to watch me play badly, that's the one for you. But anyway, it just takes practice. Anyway, that's the end of this one here. I hope you guys enjoyed it, learned something, and I'll see you next time, fuckers. Appreciate you. Bye.